Let's continue with the third exercise. Three. The gold. is oxidized uh, and then brought into solution by the so-called aqua regia, the big A. Uh, it's not necessary. Forming a complex ion with the, the chloride ions according to the following to the following equation or reaction better reaction gold plus NO3 minus plus Cl minus plus H plus equals to minus plus NO2 plus H2O. Okay. Calculate how many grams of nitric acid are needed to oxidize zero point zero five grams of gold. Okay, perfect. The gold is oxidized and then brought into solution by the aqua regia, forming a complex ion, this one. Uh, this ion is called tetrachloroaurate ion. And um, with the chloride ions, according to the following reaction, okay. Uh, aqua regia is a, a particular mixture of uh, nitric acid and uh, chlorhydric acid, and uh, um, it's the only solution able to uh, to dissolve the gold that uh, is one of the most um, stable metals we know. Okay, together with the platinum, for example, and but exists this particular mixture of, uh, uh, as I said, uh, nitric acid and chlorhydric acid, able to dissolve the gold, uh, forming these ions, these complex ions that it uh, um, could form uh, due to the fact that uh, gold has all the, all the other transition metal uh, has um, orbitals, uh, external orbitals of type D. And uh, by these orbitals, uh, 
the gold uh, could bond four uh, atoms of chlorine around, uh, around it, uh, and uh, giving rise to this kind of uh, anions, polyanions. Polyanions because it is formed uh, by uh, two, in this case, but by uh, uh, also more atoms putting, put together, uh, bonded together uh, with the, uh, an overall charge. Uh, so uh, you have to consider that if we use uh, uh, only the nitric acid uh, to search into attack the, the gold, or only the uh, chloridic acid to, uh, for searching to uh, dissolve the gold, um, it, it, it is not possible. Um, uh, we, we can't dissolve the gold uh, using uh, 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 only one of these two heads. It, it needs to, to, to use uh, them together. In the, in the right proportion by, uh, uh, su supplied by this uh, reaction, uh, this balanced reaction. Uh, in this case, this reaction uh, is still not balanced, so we have to, uh, the first thing we have to do is balance the reaction, so uh, making, uh, making it uh, uh, capable to, 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 to give uh, uh, to give um, quantities, uh, and so um, in fact the exercise has us to calculate how many grams of nitric uh, acid are needed to oxidize uh, 0 0.05 grams of gold. Okay, so as said, the first passage is to balance the equation. I need, I need now to to shift the, the board, and I have rewrite here the, 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 the reaction, but it is not, it's still not complete. I have to complete, okay, here. But uh, uh, I don't have enough space. I need to rewrite to say more countable. A U plus N O three minus plus chloride ion plus H plus equals to the complex the te uh, the tetrachloro aurate ion, tetrachloroate ion, plus NO2, plus water. Okay. In this way, it's better. Okay, let's go to write the oxidation numbers. In this case, the gold stands alone, so is its oxidation number is equal to zero. Here we have the uh, nitrate ions. Uh, in the nitrate ions, uh, I think uh, uh, we can we can remember that the the nitrogen takes plus five because these anions derives from the uh, nitric acid, of course, and in the nitric acid we uh, we under, we understood that the, the nitrogen appears in the plus five oxidation state. And when the, the nitric acid is dissolved in water and then uh, it uh, dissociate in, uh, in, uh, in ions, the oxidation state of the element contained, eventually contained in this ion, in this case, the nitrogen contained in the nitrate poly polyanions, uh, doesn't change their oxidation uh, state. So the oxidation number remains the same. But if we want to calculate, without remembering this thing, if we want to directly calculate the oxidation number of the nitrogen in this case, we can uh, consider that oxygen has, as always, minus two. Uh, and so 
3 multiplying minus 2 equals to minus 6. So in this case, uh, the, the algebraic sum of the oxidation uh, uh, numbers of the elements uh, has to be equals to the, to the charge, to the real charge of the, of the ions and not equals to zero like uh, uh, a neutral, neutral uh, formula like this one. Because here we have a, a sort of molecule with a charge and so the, the sum of the oxidation numbers has to be equals to the charge. And, so in, and, and by, by this uh, reasoning, I can write here plus five. So minus six plus five equals to minus one, the charge of the ions, okay? And um, okay, uh, here the oxidation number of the chlorine is clear, it's minus one. Here uh, we have the hydrogen cations here. Uh, okay, here we have a no metal, no metals, four no metals bonded with uh, a metal. So of course, uh, who, who commands in this case is the no metal that has uh, higher electronegativity. And so here the chlorine takes minus one as oxidation number and uh, uh, repeating uh, what we what we have do uh, did uh, for the nitrate uh, anions here I can write that gold takes plus three because four multiplying minus one minus four plus three gives the minus one the the, the charge of the the overall charge of this formula and uh, okay here we have minus two and here plus four, okay? The water remains always the same. So uh, according to the text of the exercise, uh, uh, it's clear that gold is oxi oxidized. And so I can write that the gold zero uh, goes in, uh, in solution uh, becoming a gold plus three and releasing three electrons per atom. At the same time, nitrogen, I can erase here, nitrogen uh, starting from plus five of oxidation state gains one electron to become nitrogen plus four of this molecule that is not an ion, it doesn't charge, of course, is the dioxide, the nitrogen dioxide. Okay, so doing the cross product, can obtain uh, gold zero remains the same okay and under we have three and plus five plus three electrons that gives three and plus four. Okay. Notice that chlorine remains, in practice remains the same. Uh, it was minus one and it remains minus one. Uh, okay. Despite the, 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 the bonding with the gold. Uh, okay, now we can introduce uh, this uh, coefficient in the wall uh, reaction, obtaining that gold plus three ions nitrate plus chlorine that has uh, that still has uh, undefined 
a coefficient, and so the hydrogen equals to the tetrachloroate anions plus three molecules of the of the dioxide plus water. Okay. Before before we 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 consider um, the overall charge in this case, uh, we have to define all the uh, the coefficients regarding the charges present in the um, in the in the reaction. Uh, so in this case, I have to consider that here I have four atoms of chlorine and. Uh, at the same time, I have to have four atoms of chlorine in, uh, in, uh, in the first member of the reaction. So I can put four here. Okay, now uh, all the chargers uh, accepted the, the, the hydrogen uh, charges uh, uh, that will be uh, useful to, to, to balance the overall uh, reaction are, uh, are uh, set. Are, um, defined. And so I can count here. Here we have three minus charges and plus four minus charges. So we have an overall charge equals to minus seven, three plus four. And here we have only one negative charge. Here the overall charge is minus one due to the, the complex ion. So what I have to do is to make these two charges equals one to each other. And I can do this using the undefined coefficient of the hydrogen, putting here six. So minus seven plus six equals to minus one. And uh, now I can, I can finish the balancing with the mass, putting three in front of the water. So I can justify the six atoms of hydrogen in both sides of the reaction. Perfect. We can check the oxygen if it works. Uh, here we have nine atoms of oxygen. Here we have uh, six plus three, nine atoms of oxygen. Okay, the, the reaction now is balanced, is correctly balanced. And uh, now I can, we, can, we can use it uh, for doing um, calculation, quantitative calculation, and not only qualitative considerations. Uh, okay, I can raise here, raise here, stand, standing careful. Okay, okay, perfect. So, come back to read what the text of the exercises ask us. Calculate how many grams of nitric acid are needed to oxidize 0.05 grams of gold. Okay, so the, where are you? Here. So the, the known parameter in this case is the, the mass oxidized of the, the gold equals to 0.05 grams. So. In this way, I can find the, the moles to start to reason about the, the problem. The moles are equal to 0 0.05 grams divided by the molar mass of the gold. So I go to the periodic table and I can see that uh, the molar mass of the gold is uh, 199 point 97, almost 200. And 
uh, it's very heavy, the gold. And um, so, this riches gives 2.54 per 10 to minus 4 mole. Okay, now, the exercise ask, ask, asks us the, here is three, okay, to calculate the, the quantity, the mass in grams of the nitric acids. And here we cannot see directly the nitric acids, but it is not a problem. We have to consider uh, that nitric acids, uh, when uh, dissolved in water, I hope you can hear me. Um, when dissolved in water, uh, uh, give rise to a said and uh, 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 ionic uh, dissociation. Uh, here I, I will write this uh, ionic dissociation in the Arrhenius modality. Arrhenius uh, didn't consider it, uh, doesn't consider it the, uh, the, the water as a, a real reactant, but only a, a solvent, and so, for Arrhenius, the water can be put here to indicate that this, this reaction is occurring in, in water, simply occurring in the water. And so in this way, I can write that the, the ionic, the solution is equals to this one. So nitric acid. In addition, I, I can say that nitric acid is a strong acid, is a strong electrolyte. Strong electrolyte, I know you, you already know what, uh, what does it mean, because uh, you uh, have followed the, the lessons of uh, Professor Panzini, so I'm sure that you already know what I'm saying, but I would like to, to repeat. It's not a problem. We, we are here for, uh, for this thing, and uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's the right way. Uh, it's a strong acid. Strong acid means that all the nitric acid dissolved in water uh, dissociate in ions. So uh, these molecules doesn't, uh, doesn't give rise to a condition of equilibrium in which uh, the, uh, there, there is a partial dissociation of these, uh, of these molecules. And uh, uh, this is the situation um, proper for uh, uh, the, the, the weak electrolytes, okay? But in this case, nitric acid is a strong acid, a strong electrolyte, and so, all the, uh, the, the acid dissolved in water uh, uh, dissociate in ions. So uh, I, can I, I can say that this uh, reaction goes to a completion, goes to a completion, not, uh, and don't give rise to an equilibrium. Uh, this consideration uh, permits me to, to, to say that the moles of the ion, the nitrate ions formed, are equals to the moles of the acid from which they are derived. It's a simple consideration of stoichiometry, of the stoichiometry. Uh, related to a, a, a reaction uh, uh, that go that goes uh, 
uh, to a completion that, that has only an arrow in, in one direction. So it means that the reactants at the end of the process uh, completely, uh, are completely finished um, and uh, the only things remains in the, in the, in the system is the, the, second, the second member of the reaction, the, the left side, uh, the right side of the reaction. Uh, so I can consider this result. This result allows me to calculate the moles of the nitrate uh, ions in, uh, to the respect of the moles of the gold. expressed by the mass given from the text. And then, so I can calculate the mass of the nitric acid due uh, this relation. Now I, I only have to, to write the stoichiometric ratios between gold and nitrate anions on the gold, that is the known term, and by the stoichiometry of the reaction, I can see that here is three, the coefficient I have to use, and for gold is one. So here I can write three on one, three, of course. So. The moles of the nitrate is equal to the moles of the gold equals to 2.54 multiplying 10 to minus 4 mole. Perfect. But these moles, as due this uh, relation, is equals at the same time to the moles of the nitric acid. So the moles of the nitric. I rewrite. OK. Finally, we can answer the question of the exercise, writing that the mass of the acid uh, the, uh, the nitric acid is equal to the multiplication of the, uh, the molar mass of the acid uh, by the moles of the acid. And the molar mass of the acid is, uh, excuse me, sorry. Forget to to uh, to lower the the volume. Uh, okay, the molar mass of the 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 acid is equals to six three point zero two, multiplying this number two point four four ten minus four, and finally. We obtain 0.048 grams of acid. Mm -hmm. So to oxidize 0 0.05 grams of gold uh, are needed um, uh, almost the same, uh, the same mass of uh, nitric acid. Okay.
not finished. Wow. Okay. Can continue. Four. No. Four. Balance. The following. The following reaction in basic media. Okay, the reaction is MnO4 to minus that gives. Minus plus man of two. Don't stop. Okay. Balance the following reaction in basic media. Okay. This reaction gives me opportunity to, to say two things. The first, that now, differently from the previous exercise, we, we need to balance the, this reaction in basic media. So, in this time, when we have to balance in basic, me, basic media, uh, we have to use, we need to use, we must use, uh, of course, not the positive charges of the hydrogen, but the negative charges of the hydroxide anions. So, in this, in this, uh, in this, uh, 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 in this condition, we have to use the charges OH minus cooled hydroxide uh, ions or anions, uh, if you want. If you want to to make clear that you are asking, you are uh, you are um, talking about uh, a negative ion, so we call it anion. Uh, Okay, the second thing, interesting thing, that this is a, a particular but very common uh, redox reaction and in which if you, if you uh, take a look, uh, in which the, uh, the same element uh, undergoes a reduction and the oxidation at the same time. A part of this element uh, undergoes and oxidation, and the, the other part of the same element undergoes a, a, a reduction process. In fact, if we start to, to write the oxidation numbers uh, of the, all the elements, we can, try, we can find that the oxygen is minus two. So the manganese uh, has to, to take uh, necessary plus six, Be why? Because four multiplying minus two minus eight plus six equals to the charge of the ions, minus two. And this is the manganate anions, the manganate anions. Here we have the permanganate uh, anions in which the oxygen, uh, uh, it's uh, still minus two, and the manganese has to take plus seven. So in this anion, uh, the manganese is oxided, is oxidized uh, to the respect uh, of the manganese inside the, the manganate anion. And, but in this dioxide of manganese, the manganese takes plus four. So, in this case, the manganese, to the respect of the initial condition, uh, is uh, reducted. So, manganese uh, oxi oxidized and reduct uh, at the same time. Uh, so, we have to consider this, this little thing, but um, 
in practice uh, doesn't change to the respect of the other uh, uh, redox reaction. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, redox reaction is called disproportion or dismutation. And uh, so, okay. Let's go to write the half reactions to balance the, the reaction. Here we have manganese plus six that becomes manganese plus seven, releasing one electron. And now, and after, we have manganese plus six, the same, but another part of it uh, that gains two electrons to become manganese plus four. So, balancing the electron transferring with the, the cross product, we obtain uh, simply that two manganese plus six gives two manganese plus seven plus two electrons. And uh, the second line remains the same, of course. Electrons become manganese plus four. Okay, so now we have balanced the electronic transferring and we can go back to the reaction inserting the, uh, the stoichiometric coefficient, coefficients we, we have found, uh, but with only an attention. Uh, here we have two different uh, coefficients for the same element inside the reaction. So what we have to do, simply the sum, simply the sum, because these are two portion of the same element that undergoes differ different processes, one of uh, oxide, uh, oxidizing and the other one of uh, reduction. And so uh, all the, these two parts needs to be considered together. So we can uh, also start from the second, uh, the second uh, uh, members of this uh, reaction to say, <laughs> Um, to, to not be worried because I have to put for sure two in front of this. Here, uh, now uh, it's one and so it is, not, it, it is not more undefined but one and here I have to put the sum of these two half reaction and so here I have to put Three, I can also write here directly the, uh, the whole process that is the sum of the two half reactions. Uh, I remember you, I remind you that uh, the, half, the half reactions are only a method we use to, to solve this, this kind of reaction, but uh, in a, in a um, uh, the, the process, uh, uh, it's, it's not uh, for real uh, divided in this, uh, in this way. Uh, the, the reaction uh, occurs uh, and uh, we interpret uh, this, uh, this, uh, this occurring uh, with this, uh, uh, using this method. But it's only a, a, an our point of view. Uh, that permits us to balance the, the transferring, the, the, the changing of the oxidation state that we uh, interpret with the, an electronic transfer, transferring. And so doing the, the sum of the, these two half uh, reaction, we obtain a two plus one, three manganese in the oxidation state plus six. Uh, plus two electrons equals to two manganese plus seven plus two electrons plus manganese plus four. As you can see, I, I did the, 
uh, the sum members to members of the two reaction, of course. You have to ever sum members to members uh, the half reaction together to obtain the, the, whole, the whole reaction. And here, two electrons and two electrons uh, are uh, erased uh, one by one, one each other, as um, we, uh, we are considering the, uh, a mathematical equation. Okay. Now, we have uh, still not finished because we need to, uh, to balance the overall charge, of course, in a basic media. So in this, in this case, we have to use, so I think I can erase here, we have to use negative charges. All right. For manganese, it's very sensible to this board. Uh, and this was two. Perfect. I can erase also the oxidation number that uh, they are not still useful. Okay. So be careful when you do this exercise that involves uh, together uh, ions and uh, molecules. Uh, because uh, if you write in the wrong way the oxidation uh, state, you, you can, you can um, do mistakes uh, interpreting, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, a molecule like an ion. And so uh, uh, it's, a question, it's a question of uh, tranquility during an exam. We are uh, uh, under pressure. And so we can make a lot of mistakes. So uh, I recommend you to, I suggest you to, to rewrite the, the, the equation or your sheets and uh, uh, be, uh, being careful uh, of the, the, the charges, the right charges of the compounds comparing in the, in the reaction. Okay. Um, now, here we have. Three multiplying minus two, minus six of overall charge. In the second member, we have two multiplying minus one, so we have minus two as our overall charge. Now we have to use, as said, the hydroxide uh, anions that are. Uh, negative charges, and so we are constricted to use these charges uh, in the second member. It's the only way uh, we can follow to, uh, to make equals these two numbers. So I have to put here plus four hydroxide ions obtaining Minus two, minus four equals minus six. In this way, we have uh, balanced, we have respected the uh, conservation of the charge low. Now we have to respect the conservation of the mass low. So we have to justify the presence of these anions here. Uh, how? putting in the other side of the reaction in which I have uh, positioned the, the, the charges, in this case negative. So introducing here uh, two, two molecules of water because here we have four atoms of hydrogen. So I need to have four atoms 
of hydrogen also in the, uh, between the reactants. And uh, we can check the oxygen if uh, it works. Here we have 3 multiplying 4, 12, uh, uh, 12, 14, 14 atoms of oxygen. Here we have 8 plus 2, 10 plus 4, 14 oxygen. So uh, the, the, the reaction is correctly uh, balanced. Okay, five, balance the following reaction. in acidic media. Okay, we will repeat something uh, just did, but I think it would be useful to practice. Minus that gives seven minus two plus okay. So here we have <coughs> the three valent uh, cation of chromium reacting with uh, permanganate anions, obtaining uh, uh, dichromate uh, anions and uh, uh, divalent uh, cation of manganese. So, as this uh, reaction uh, says, manganese are reluctant. The permanganate is able to oxida oxidize the chromium. In fact, here, oxygen is minus two. This is plus seven minus two. In this case, we have seven multiplying minus two minus 14. Uh, we need to have minus two as charge of the ions. And so this is necessary to use plus, plus six uh, for the chromium because minus 14 plus 12, 2 multiplying plus 12 gives minus 2. And here we have plus 2. So writing the half reactions, I can obtain that uh, chromium plus 3 becomes chromium plus seven uh, releasing three electrons per atom. But here I can notice that we have two atoms of chromium. I can consider directly these two atoms. So putting two in front of uh, all the elements in the half reactions obtaining this, this thing. Contestually, uh, manganese plus seven gains five electrons 
to become manganese, the cation, the divalent cation, uh, manganese plus two. So, but the number we obtain uh, are high. Okay, uh, so doing the, the cross product, we obtain 10 chromium plus three equals to uh, 10 chromium plus seven, uh, uh, plus six. Uh, notice that I'm searching to put the oxidation number uh, exactly under, uh, exactly over the, 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 the symbol of the, the elements and not translated uh, on the right uh, to not be uh, confused this, uh, this number with the, a real charge of an, of an ion. Um, plus, Thirteen uh, electrons. Okay, here we have six manganese plus seven plus thirteen electrons equals to six manganese plus two. So. We can go back to introduce these these numbers in the in the reaction obtaining ten chromium with six uh, manganese plus seven. Here we have ten atoms of chromium plus six, but here. Uh, there are um, there are just two atoms of chromium, so I have to put five in front of this uh, of this anion to obtain five multiplying to ten the ten atoms. Uh, um, derived by the the, the, um, the balancing of the electron transferring, and uh, and after I can put six in front of the manganese uh, okay, seems it works. So now, we have to balance the overall charge. And so what we can do, we can do, we can raise here to have enough space to go on. Okay, this is the first thing. And now, uh, here we have 13 plus and minus 6, 13 minus seven, 6 equals to plus 24 as overall charge. And here we have uh, minus 10 plus 12 minus 10 plus 12 equals to plus 2 as overall charge. So uh, considering 
this uh, uh, reaction in an acidic media, I'm constricted to use the hydrogen exactly in this position. Uh, it's the only way to make these two numbers equals one to each other. And so here in particular, I have to introduce 22 H plus. At the same time, I have to go back to the, the first uh, term of this uh, chemical equation, introducing plus um, 11, uh, it's very difficult. I have to rewrite. It was minus minus eleven x two. Okay, it seems. Seems it works. And so we have to check the oxygen. Here we have 5 multiplying 7, 35 oxygen. And here we have uh, 24 plus 11 equals to 35. Oxygen. Okay, it seems uh, it works, and so the 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 reaction is corrected, balanced. Come on. Okay. Something different. How many grams of nitrogen molecules are formed when? One hundred grams of and two H four are reacted with two hundred grams of N2O4 according 
to the reaction. it is okay how many grams of uh, gaseous hydrogen molecular hydrogen are formed when uh, 100 grams of this compound <coughs> sorry is called hydrazine hydrazine are reacted with 200 grams of tetraoxide of nitrogen according to the so the reaction, two points, the reaction is this one. So hydrazine reacting with this tetraoxide of nitrogen give rise to uh, uh, nitrogen, uh, gaseous nitrogen plus water. This is uh, in um, the, the, the reaction of combustion of some rockets, actually, as I know. And um, okay, the the reaction needs to be uh, to be balanced. And uh, uh, I I just see that I just have seen that this is a disproportion or or this mutation like the previous one, the reaction in which uh, the same element changes um, follows two 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 ways, two different <laughs> two opposite ways the way of the oxidation and the way of the reduction at the same time. Here we can uh, write the oxidation number, putting plus one to the hydrogen, and in, the, uh, in this case, minus two to nitrogen in this molecule. Here we have minus two for oxygen, and so uh, plus, uh, plus four for the nitrogen, four, Multiplying minus two, minus eight, so plus eight, zero. And now we have zero, and here the water is still the same, minus two, plus one. And, uh, in many cases, the water, uh, it's not important to, uh, to, to solve the exercise. Um, so we can notice that we have nitrogen, that a part of the nitrogen uh, is uh, uh, oxided because uh, the oxidation number uh, changes from minus two to zero. And at the same time, the nitrogen contained in another compound this time uh, is uh, uh, oxided, is uh, reducted, passing through plus four to, uh, from plus four to um, zero. So we can. I can write that nitrogen minus two uh, gives um, nitrogen zero, releasing two electrons. But can notice that. Uh, here we have two atoms, here we have two atoms. Maybe we can consider directly this condition in the half reaction, putting here two, two, and here four. And here four. And this is the oxidation half reaction. Then I can write the reduction. I can write that N plus four, gaining four electrons, become, become N zero. Also in this case, we notice that here we have two atoms of nitrogen, and uh, in the same way, 
in the second, uh, in the second term of the equation. So we can consider directly here this condition, putting uh, also in this case 2, 8, and here. Uh, two. In this case, uh, I could. Hello. In this case, I could um, write directly. Here we have a, a molecular form, so I can put two directly here. For not having uh, some uh, embrace. After, so now we go on with the cross product, obtaining that, uh, obtaining that um, four and minus two gives two molecules of nitrogen. Zero, of course, plus eight electrons. And the second line remains the same. Plus four plus eight electrons equals to the molecules and two. So, so we can write that we can use these coefficients in the water reaction, introducing them in the water reaction properly. So we have to use four in front of the hydrogen. Boy, we have to use uh, two in front of the tetraoxide OK, and after, here, we have to introduce the sum of these two, uh, of these two uh, coefficients, because we are talking of the same, of the same molecule. Uh, both the compounds, uh, both uh, the nitrogen contained in both the compounds arrives to be this molecule. So we have to consider both the contributions. And so I have to put 2 plus 1, 3. But something, something doesn't work in this case. Something doesn't work. Ah, OK, OK, OK. I did uh, an error because I not considered that here we have just two atoms. Just two atoms. So when we, uh, I have to introduce four atoms here, I have to put not four in front of the hydrogen as I did, but four divided by two. Two. OK, in this way, I have four atoms of nitrogen. Uh, we, we have to say uh, care, careful with, uh, with these passages, because uh, it's easy to, to, to lose uh, the, the, um, uh, the correct way to follow. Uh, here we have two atoms of uh, nitrogen plus four, so I have to leave what, what I have found, one, because we just have two atoms of nitrogen. And here I can put the, the sum of the two, as I said. So in this case, we have four atoms plus two equals to six atoms in the second, in the second, uh, in the second uh, uh, term of the chemical equation. The last step is to balance the, the water. Here we have 4 multiplying 2, 8, 
atoms of hydrogen, so I can put four in front of the water, and uh, at, at, this, at this time, uh, the oxygen has to, to work <laughs> necessary. Uh, and uh, in fact, here we have four atoms of oxygen, and here we have four atoms of oxygen. So uh, now the, the reaction is corrected, uh, is corrected, is, is balanced in the corrected way, and uh, we, can, we can move on to, uh, to the calculation asked by, uh, from the, the text of the exercise. Here I can erase. Can erase, okay. Perfect. So now the reaction is clear. And we, we can do um, a reasonment. Um, usually, when you, in, the, in all the exercises we have seen, um, only a quantity, the quantity of only an element was given in the text of the exercise. In fact, I said that the, the, the reaction, the chemical, chemical reaction, is uh, 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 one grade of freedom system, a system with the, a one grade of freedom. Uh, I only have to, uh, I only have to choose one of the of the compounds participating in the in the reaction to obtain. Uh, all the other quantities inside the reaction. But in this case, we are encountering something different because the test of the exercise uh, is asking us how many grams of nitrogen are formed when 100 grams of hydrazine are reacted with 200 grams of tetroxide. So the text of the exercise is given us two quantities to be considered. Two quantities to be considered. This is when you find uh, uh, an exercise of this type in which uh, the exercise gives you the quantity of the, of the two reactants, um, uh, you have to know that you are encountering an exercise in which uh, a typical exercise of the limiting reactant, of limiting reactant. Uh, what does it mean? That um, we have to check that if this, these two quantities are the right quantities to the respect of the, stoichiome uh, the stoichiometry of the reaction, but uh, 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 probably it isn't. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's more sure that we have to decide who is of these two compounds the so-called limiting reactant. The limiting reactant is the reactant that is, uh, uh, that is given, that is supplied in, uh, in the reaction in the lower quantities, in the lower quantity. Uh, and in particular is the uh, reactant that hands for first, blocking the reaction. In practice is the, the reactants that uh, define what are the quantities of the product, of the products for real, actually. Um, I would like to show you an example to, to to make me more clear in, the, in, this, uh, in this way. Maybe you already know what I'm saying, but I would like to be 
to be sure. Okay, let's consider, uh, let's consider uh, we have um, 10, 10 atoms of hydrogen. Ten atoms of hydrogen, and then we have four four atoms of oxygen. Okay, the question is, how many how many molecules of water we can produce using uh, these uh, these atoms? These quantities of the the two reactants, oxygen and hydrogen, considering that, as we all know, the molecule of the, the water is uh, H2O, so, so uh, every uh, oxygen atom needs two hydrogen to form uh, a water molecule. So in this case, we can, we can do one molecule, two molecules, three molecules, four molecules, and not more. What does it mean? This means that the oxygen, in this case, is the limiting reactant. It's the reactant that is given in the, in, the, in the lower quantity, in the less quantity. And uh, uh, so it is the reactant that decides, that define uh, the real quantities of the product we can obtain from the reaction. Because it is the reactant that hands for first. Here we form the first, the second, the third, the fourth, molecules, and then, then the reaction is blocked. And in the same way, in, in, in the same way, this could happen in a, in, a, in a reaction like this. So we have to decide. Uh, here we have an excess of two atoms, okay? So this is the limiting reactant. This is the excess reactant, the reactant that is given uh, too much, okay? And uh, so if we think to, to calculate the quantity, the quantity of the, the quantities of the product starting from the excess reactant, uh, we, we do a mistake. We, um, we consider more quantities of the of the of the actual quantities of products. So, coming back to our exercise, we need to understand who is the limiting reactant between hydrazine and tetraoxide. How we can do this in different ways. In the, as often happens, there are different ways to do this, uh, to understand uh, this fact. I, so I propose you a method, one method. Uh, the method based on the confrontation of the, uh, of the two ratios, two ratios. One, is the ratio uh, that we call, uh, that we we call a stoichiometric ratio, based on the stoichiometry of the the reaction, so we can com compare this ratio, for example, written in this way. And we call we can call this uh, ratio 
stoichiometric ratio. And um, we can consider at the same time the same ratio, but actual ratio based on the quantities that for real the exercise leads me to consider. This uh, could be named actual ratios. The ratios that I can calculate starting from the mass or the quantities uh, um, indicated by the text of the exercise. The comparing of these two, these two ratios help me to understand who is the, uh, the compound uh, dosed in the, in the lower quantities, um, uh, otherwise the, uh, the limiting uh, reactants, and who is the excess reactant. So, uh, let's go on to calculate the, the moles of the two substances, and then we can go back to use these uh, ratios. So we have a mass of the hydrogen yes equals to 100 grams and the mass of the tetraoxide equals to 200 grams. So, the moles of the hydrogen are equals to 100 divided by the molar mass of the hydrogen. Maybe I have to calculate. Yes, I do this calculation uh, just in time. Okay, so here we have 28 plus multiple summary by 4.04. Okay, 32.06 equals to point. 12 moles. In the case of the oxide, we obtain 200 divided by uh, 88.02, okay, of molar mass of this oxide equals to 100 by 2.27 moles, okay. So now we can go back to write the two ratios I'm suggesting you to use for this comparing. Okay, perfect. This is the stoichiometric ratios that we can derive directly from the uh, stoichiometry of the reaction. Here we have two 
of stoichiometric, uh, um, stoichiometric coefficients, here one. So the, the, the stoichiometry ratios here is equals to two. And then we have the, the ratios we called actual. Why actual? Because it is based on the real quantities we imagine to have put in the reactor to obtain the reaction. And so we want to know what happens. Um, here we have 3.12 divided by 2.27 equals 2. I will tell you soon. Three point twelve divided by two point twenty seven equals to one point thirty seven. Okay, so what we can uh, we can uh, derive that the stoichiometric ratios is bigger than the actual uh, the actual ratio. So now we can ask to ourselves why this uh, this actual ratio is uh, uh, is less than the stoichiometry uh, stoichiometric uh, ratio. The answer is because the substance that that stands in the numerator of the ratio is uh, too small or at the same time because the substance uh, in the denominator of the ratio is too much okay so uh, these are the two phases of the same coin of course uh, what i'm saying that this uh, ratios has to increase to uh, to reach the 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 value um, uh, defined by the stoichiometry. So, what uh, what I can do to increase uh, these uh, these uh, uh, real this actual ratio? I have to uh, increase the quantity of the substance in the numerator or decrease the quantity of the substance in the denominator. So, in practice, I'm saying that the hydrazine is the limiting agent, because, uh, reactant, because uh, it was given in less quantity of the necessary, of that necessary. In fact, if I uh, increase the quantity of the hydrazine, I can reach, I can uh, make increased all the ratios and reach the, the value uh, defined by the stoichiometry. So by this confrontation, by this comparing, I can tell that hydrogen is the limiting reactant and the oxide, the tetroxide of nitrogen is the excess reactant. Okay. Now we can do calculation, and we will do the calculation of the product to the respect of the limiting reactant, okay? So we are sure to, to obtain actual numbers. So here, I can erase here, here. Uh, how many grams of, okay, 
perfect. So I have to consider the unknown term to the respect of the known term, in this case, the limiting reactant on the mole of the hydrazine. This, uh, uh, this radius is equals to uh, three divided by two. In practice, the moles of the nitrogen are equals to the three half of uh, the moles of the hydrazine equals the mole. Uh, I remember the mole of the hydrazine was 3.12. Yes, 3.12. And so, we obtain four point six eight moles, and now the mass. is equal to the molar mass of the nitrogen molecule. It is equal to 28.02 multiplying 4.68. In this case, we obtain point one grams. Okay. But to what happens to the excess rectans at the end of the reaction? We told that uh, when the limiting reactants is finished, the reaction is blocked and cannot go on, of course. And so a part of the excess Reactant will be will remain in the at, at the end of the process, and when we can calculate how many grams of the of the excess reactants remains at the end of the process, and with a, a simple calculation, because we can calculate the stoichiometric quantity. What, is, what was necessary by the, 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 the stoichiometry of the reaction, and then comparing this quantity with the quantity suggested by the text in excess. So I can repeat this calculation, but, but using as unknown term, unknown parameter, this oxide. Here I, I can erase what we we did before, and I can um, this this uh, this ratio is equals to one half, and so um, the moles of of this tetraoxide moles that I can um, call to be to be um, uh, more clear stoichiometric equals to uh, uh, moles of hydrazine divided by two. Fib. 3.12 equals to 1 point um, moles. This means that the mass of the oxide uh, 
imposed by the stoichiometry of the reaction is equal to the molar mass of the oxide multiplied to, to the, uh, the moles of the, of the oxide. And so we obtain uh, 88. Eighty-eight point zero point zero two multiplying one point, and so we obtain one hundred thirty-seven point three grams. This is the the quantity. It was necessary by the stoichiometry of the reaction. But we, we uh, are suggested to use 200 grams. So the difference between these two mass is the quantity of the oxide that remains at the end of the process of the process uh, um, unaltered, unchanged. So mass of the oxide in excess is equal to the mass of the same oxide at the, uh, the we can call it uh, actual, actual minus the mass uh, of the same oxide uh, stoichiometry equals to 200 minus 137.3 equals 0.0. .0 Six uh, two point seven grams. So sixty two point seven grams of the oxide will remain unchanged at the end of the reaction. Okay. Seven calcium carbide reacts with water to form. form calcium hydroxide uh, and the flammable
guess. 18. If 100 grams of carbide reacted with fifty grams of water, what quantity of eighteen can be obtained? What amount of excess reactant remains at the end of the reaction? At the The reaction is this one. Is that the one? Calcium carbide plus water. to calcium hydroxide plus the eighteen okay since I have read I have write all the necessary uh Okay, calcium carbide reacts with water to form calcium hydroxide and the flammable gas ethene. If 100 grams of carbide reacted with 50 grams of water, what quantity of the ethene can be obtained? What, what amount of excess reactant remains at the end of the reaction? So, the reply of the previous exercise, but in this case, we have uh, the, the reaction uh, just, just uh, balanced. Yes. OK, perfect. So we can immediately calculate what we need. So we, we know that the mass of the carbide are 100 grams, and the mass of water to be considered is 50 grams. So, the mole of this carbide are equals to 100 divided the molar mass of the carbide. I hope I have it here. Okay. 64.1 equals to 1.56 uh, moles moles okay in the case of the wa of the water divided by the molar mass of the water, and this uh, 
this radius is equal to 2.77 moles of water. Okay, so we come back to consider the stoichiometric ratio between uh, the two compounds I'm, consider, I'm considering, and this is the stoichiometric. Uh, I need to, to, to see the, the reaction. Okay, one and two are the coefficients, so. I can write one half. At the same time, the actual ratio between these two substances is equal to uh, 1.56 divided by 2.77. This reaches is equals to, I don't know, we have to calculate it. Zero point well, they are very similar, but uh, but not equals. In this case. The actual ratios is equal, is higher, it's bigger than the, the stoichiometric ratios. What does it mean? It means that um, the, the substance that, that is the numerator of these uh, um, ratios, of these actual ratios, is too much to the respect of what the stoichiometry asks, or at the same time, the, the substance that stands in the denominator position of this ratio uh, is, um, is, is, is less than the, the quantity that the stoichiometry requires. So, by this comparing, uh, I can tell that the carbide is the is the excess reactant and the water is the limiting reactant. In this case, we, we have used the, the, wrong, uh, the wrong quantity for the, for the carbide, and uh, uh, you can tell this, uh, this uh, condition because uh, if you think to reduce the quantity of the carbide, the ratio Will be will decrease and will uh, reach the right the right ratios um, defined by the the stoichiometry of the of the reaction. So all the calculation uh, uh, has to be uh, done to the respect uh, of the limiting reactant that is the water. So we can go back to the text. <coughs> so we have to calculate uh, what quantity of ethene can be obtained. Okay, what quantity of ethene can be obtained? Um, so we have to consider, we can put here in this way, uh, this calculation may be are useful. I would like to. Oh, I can write.
right here. So I have to consider the moles of the 18 to the respect of the mole of the limiting reactant, the water. This ratios, uh, ratio is equal to 1 on 2 because these are the respective uh, stoich stoichiometric uh, coefficients. And so I obtain that the moles are exactly one half of the, the mole of the, of the water. So I have to do 2.77 divided by 2 equals. One point three eight five uh, moles, and so the mass of the eighteen will be equal to the molar mass of the eighteen. Mm, I don't have it. We have twenty six point zero four multiplying one point three eight five equals equals. Thirty six point zero seven grams. This is the quantity we obtain by the limiting uh, reactant. The last thing we have to do is to uh, calculate the, uh, the excess of the carbide. So The carbide to the respect of the limiting agent we know are equals to uh, one half. One half, yes. So the mole of the carbide are equals to the moles uh, of the of the eighteen, the same one. Point three moles, and after the mass the of carbide defined by the stoichiometry are equals to the molar mass of the carbide sixty four point one multiplying one point three. And this is equal eight, eight, eight point seven eight grams. So What are the quantities in excess is equal to the difference between the quantity given in the text and it was 100 grams minus the stoichiometry the stoichiometric quantity we we found and so 
we can tell that at the end of the process we remain we remains eleven point twenty two grams of carbide unchanged. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for your attention, dear boys. Ok? No, 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 mi devo fermare o cosa? Ah, ma faccio tutto insieme? Mm? Per ora ho fatto tre ore. Ne manca una. E poi come la... la... Ok? Tu dalle due stai occupato, vero? Okay, uh, dear students, now some simple exercises uh, to the regards of combustions that are uh, particular uh, redox reactions in which characterized by uh, the, the, usually of, by the, the, the great, the intense release of energy in the form of heat, uh, um, usually uh, accompanied uh, by flames or uh, light effects, but um, I would like to show you how write how to write uh, a combust a theoretical combustion of uh, generic hydrocarbons or, uh, or of uh, generic uh, organic compounds containing carbon. Uh, so uh, it's not important the number. Uh, I think it was eight, but I really don't remember well. How much oxygen expressed in grams is needed to completely burn one hundred grams of octane. Okay, and 
How much? Carbon. Dioxide is produced Okay. This exercise gives the opportunity to introduce, uh, but I, I know that you already, already have seen uh, combustion, theoretical combustion by Professor Pansini, so I, I will recall it. Uh, I will recall them uh, very fast. Uh, in any case, to write a combustion of, uh, of uh, a certain uh, hydrocarbons, we need to consider the reaction in which the hydrocarbons here, I'm not writing a, a formula, but only a name, hydrocarbon, plus the oxidizer. Uh, every combustion needs a combustible uh, substance and uh, an oxidizer substance. In this, in uh, the 99.9% .9 of the cases uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, civil and technological uh, combustion, uh, industrial combustion we use uh, in the world, the oxidizer uh, used is the, the oxygen in the air. So we have to, to write the combustible plus the oxidizer equals to hydrocarbon, uh, see, hydrocarbon, um, carbon dioxide, dioxide, I have read the hydrocarbon and I repeat it. And uh, carbon dioxide plus water. Here I cannot, I cannot put any coefficients, of course, because I'm considering a name here. And so I cannot decide what are the coefficients. But it is important to, uh, to recall that the fact that in the theoretical um, combustion, we consider that all the carbon contained in the hydrocarbon becomes carbon dioxide. So we can, we can say that all the carbon takes the maximum number of oxidation uh, it's possible for it. In, in in practice, plus four. So, in the theoretical combustion, we avoid to consider that the part of the carbon in the hydrocarbon could be uh, could become, for example, monoxide, in which the the carbon uh, is it isn't in the in its maximum. Uh, oxidation state. So we avoid to consider the deviance uh, to the respect of the theoretical, um, the theoretical um, happening. And so, at the same time, we consider that all the hydrogen contained in the hydrocarbon has to become water. If um, um, if as a combustible uh, substance uh, we have some organic uh, compound containing uh, nitrogen and uh, uh, containing nitrogen, we consider in a theoretical uh, combustion that all this nitrogen has to become N2. Uh, if, for example, so if, you, if we burn the ammonia, we have to consider that all the nitrogen contained in the ammonia has to become the molecular nitrogen. So in this case, we are avoiding to consider the oxide and the monoxide of nitrogen. 
the so-called NOx. Uh, because they are uh, uh, a deviance to the uh, to the theoretical uh, to the theoretical um, process, okay. And uh, if we uh, if in the combust in combustible we are considering uh, there is uh, the sulfur as uh, some uh, solid combusti uh, combusti um, uh, combustible um, uh, as uh, some combustible solid combustible as um, we need to consider that all the sulfur has to become uh, sulfur dioxide dioxide but um, Usually, the sulfur uh, uh, were extracted from the combustible for the, from the civil and the industrial combustible. Uh, we try to make it the less is possible um, because uh, the, uh, its combustion produces the uh, sulfur. Uh, dioxide that with water forms uh, strong acids uh, and are toxic for us uh, differently from the carbon dioxide that is not toxic for us so we choose to uh, avoid the use of the sulfur as a combustible okay so now we have to substitute this name with the real a real hydrocarbon. Okay, as I said, this is a, a redox reaction, but uh, in many cases, in the most of the cases. We have to, 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 to balance uh, this redox reaction using the ALF uh, reactions method uh, for two reasons, mainly for two reasons. The first, because they are very simple and we, we can avoid to waste my, uh, our time. And uh, sometimes, the second, uh, the second reason could be that sometimes, but it's not so rare, it's common uh, condition that the carbon inside the molecules of the hydrocarbons or uh, other organic uh, <coughs> molecule, uh, not all the atoms of carbon are <coughs> present in this molecule uh, at the same state of oxidation. And, uh, and so th this could be a problem to, to set the right oxidation number inside uh, um, over the, the carbon. And uh, so we, we cannot have maybe a um, whole number, and, uh, but middle uh, average number. And, uh, and so we, we avoid to, to, to consider, to, to, to have this difficulty uh, in, in, in difficulty more. Um, so, here we have, so we, we can balance this reaction by inspection, of course. Here we have uh, eight atoms of carbon, I can put eight in front of the carbon dioxide, and uh, then we have uh, 18 uh, atoms of uh, hydrogen, so I can put nine in front of the water molecules, and obtaining, in, uh, in this case, uh, uh, nine plus 16, 25 atoms of oxygen. Here we have two atoms of oxygen, so we can 
write 25 half in this way. So multiplying by two, we obtain uh, the 25 uh, atoms required to, from the second, uh, uh, the second member of the combustion. And after, after, after doing that, this, um, we, can, uh, we can adjust uh, the, the coefficients of the reaction because to obtain multiplying uh, both the, the, the sides of the reaction by two. So here we cannot have, we, we can have a, um, a whole number and not a ratio. So here it becomes 16 and here we have 18 molecules of water. Okay, now we can do our calculation. Uh, how much oxygen is needed? Okay, I, I go to consider the, the stoichiometric ratios I need. Okay, is this one. I need to, to calculate the moles of the octane, and so the moles of, of octane we start from 100 grams of mass, so the moles of octane are equals to 100 divided by 114.27 equals equals to I have to to do this calculation 100 divided okay we obtain zero point eight seven five moles. So I can use this data here. Uh, this stoichiometric radius is uh, this one. So I obtain that. Moles of the oxygen are equals to 25 half of octane equals to, I can put this number here, obtaining ten. Point ninety four uh, moles moles of oxygen, and after the mass of oxygen is equal to the molar mass of oxygen multiplied by the the moles of oxygen. Here, of course, I'm considering the molar mass of the molecule. Uh, is multiplied by two. We can, we have to use three hundred fifty uh, grams of oxygen every one hundred grams of octane. The octane is a combustible that requires great uh, great quantity of uh, uh, oxidizer of the oxygen okay uh, how much carbon dioxide is produced
I go to write the ratios with referring to the uh, the carbon dioxide and to the respect of the octane. Obtaining uh, 16 divided by 2. In practice, the moles of the carbon dioxide, dioxide are equals to 8 multiplying the moles of the octane. Equals, equals. Also in this case, I can, I can substitute this, uh, this number here to obtain 0 0.67, seven, exactly 7 mole. And so the mass of the carbon dioxide produced by the completely burning of 100 gram of octane is Uh, this is the molar mass of the carbon dioxide multiplying 7. Three hundred eight point one grams. So if we burn completely 100 grams of octane, that is the one of the main uh, uh, combustible presence in the fuel, in the civil fuel, uh, uh, the, there are uh, in octane and hexane, hexane uh, in particular, we produce 308 grams of carbon dioxide. Ah, a lot. Right and balance the combustion, combustion reaction of hydrogen. Gas H two and calculate how much water in kilograms is produced. by burning ten kilograms of hydrogen. Okay. So we have to write the the reaction of combustion. So 
we consider the combustible plus the oxidizer that give rise to water. This is the reaction or combustion of the hydrogen. Of course, the, the, there is not uh, carbon di dioxide because hydrogen don't, 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 don't own uh, carbon. So this is one of the facts that uh, leads us, leads us uh, to try to use uh, the, the hydrogen as a, as a combustible in, uh, in, its, in, uh, in various systems, in various different systems. But the reason, uh, the mainly reason is uh, this one. Uh, if we burn hydrogen, we obtain water. And so, uh, in practice, uh, the, the burning of the hydrogen is the reaction of formation of the water. Calculate how much water in, in kilograms is produced by burning 10 kilograms. Okay, so mass of hydrogen equals to 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms, okay. So the mole of hydrogen are equals to 10 divided the molar mass of the hydrogen molecule, 2.02. .02. So I can write nearly five, okay. 10 divided two by zero, 4.95 moles. Okay. So now we have to consider if this reaction is balanced uh, and no, it is not balanced. So, now it's balanced. Uh, okay, quindi, we have to consider the radius between the, the unknown term, the quantity of waters, and the known term, in this case, the hydrogen. We obtain that the moles of the water produced, the produced water, are exactly equals to the moles of the hydrogen combusted. And so the mass of the water we produce. Uh, oh, no, no. Um, sorry. Um, here, the exercise is, is, is talking about 10 kilograms, not grams. <laughs> OK. No, uh, the moles are uh, many, 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 many more. 10 kilograms, so here we have 10,000 grams. So here we have to, I have to consider 10,000 of grams, uh, of uh, uh, grams, okay. And so here we have uh, Four thousand, four thousand nine hundred fifty point five moles. Okay. <laughs> so we have four thousand nine hundred fifty point five moles of water. And now we can calculate the right quantity of water 
multiplying these moles uh, by the, the, the molar mass of the water. So we obtain point nine grams equals to cheer point three kilograms. Okay. In practice, we obtain uh, nearly uh, 89 kilograms of water. So if we burn 10 kilograms of hydrogen, we produce nearly 90 kilograms of water. Oh, okay. Right. And balance. The combustion. Reaction. of uh, 18 18 18 uh, okay <laughs> and calculate How much carbon, how? How much carbon dioxide is produced? per day consider six hours of continuous work if 1.5 kilogram per hour are burned in a combustion chamber. If all the formation of water is condensed in a ten liter volume 
tank. How many times? How many times a day the tank need to be emptied? Okay, we have two questions here. Write and balance the combustion reaction of ethane and calculate how much carbon dioxide is produced per day. Consider six hours of continuous work okay, a day. If 1.5 kilograms per hour are burned in a combustion chamber, if all the formation water is condensed in a 10 liter volume tank, how many times a day the tank need to be emptied? Okay, so the first thing we need to, to write, of course, the, uh, the combustion of the ethane. So I can write ethane plus oxygen equals to Open up two molecules of carbon dioxide and three molecules of water. I'm counting directly the the, um, the atoms in the hydrocarbon, so I can write. Uh, here we have four plus three, seven. I have to write seven half in front of the oxygen. And after I can uh, adjust the reaction, I'm multiplying uh, uh, both the, the, the members by two. Okay. Yes, it works. So here we have. Uh, uh, a quantity of uh, combustible per hour, but nothing change, uh, nothing changes uh, to the respect of our, our calculation. Uh, this is a mass flow, but in terms of calculation, doesn't change. So. I can write mass of the thing, one point kilograms per hour. But I can um, uh, directly calculate the quantity of the combustible used in a day. And a day in this uh, hypothetical uh, uh, industry or or something else uh, is is composed by six hours of continuous work. Six hours in which this combustor uh, continue to work, continue to burn uh, the the thing. So this mass could be equals also to. 1.5 multiplying 6 kilograms day. Nine kilograms. Day. So we need to calculate how much carbon di dioxide, how much carbon dioxide is produced per day. Okay. So 
This means that every day uh, these numbers of this number of moles are used. Nine. 900, because I can write, I have to consider uh, the grams, because uh, the molar mass are expressed, are all expressed in grams, and, and so uh, I have to be, um, I have to consider, I must consider the grams, the, the mass in grams, and so here we have 9,000 grams a day, and so, here, I can divide by the molar mass of the ethane that I haven't, so it is plus point zero 0.08, okay, and from this calculation we obtain divided 299.2 moles. And so the moles of carbon dioxide to the respect of the combustible are equals to Carbon dioxide has four has a stoichiometric coefficient, and here we have two, so it's four half. In practice, two. So the mole of carbon dioxide are two times the mole of the combustible. And so, so we obtain 598.4 uh, moles in terms of mass we have mass of the carbon dioxide, I'm sure you, you already know, uh, 4.02, 26,341.7 grams in practice. Uh, 26.3 kilograms. Okay, so if we burn in, in, um, ah, and uh, this is a quantity related a day, of course. So the mass, the mass of CO2 are equals to 26.3 kilograms a day. Hmm. I was thinking, now we have to consider Ah, the water. Okay. Oh, I have there is it. Uh, it was uh, useful for me this uh, 
that calculation. I did a mistake because I, I, I have raised uh, number, uh, some numbers useful, but it's, it is not a problem. Um, we are considering, we were considering uh, the Novemi day. So I have recovered the, the lost number. OK, perfect. Now we can consider the water. Moles of water on the moles of the combustible are equals to the, the water has two as coefficient, the combustible two. OK, so two, three. Mole of water that we produced are three times the mole of the combustible. So multiplying three, eight hundred ninety seven point six moles. Okay, and so the mass of water we produce a day is equal to the molar mass of the water multiplied by the number of the moles of water. So we obtain. Sixteen thousand one hundred seven four seventy four point nine grams. In practice, we obtain sixteen point uh, seventeen. Um, kilograms of water a day. So the question was the question I can write I can read the question here. The question was how many times a day does the tank need to be emptied? A tank of ten liter of volume. Okay. Here we have a uh, a number expressed in, in terms of, uh, of mass and in kilograms in particular. But we can consider that here the, the test of the exercise uh, told us that all the water is condensed uh, and we, is condensed. So we can consider uh, this, this, uh, this process at uh, um, environment temperature and so uh, uh, so we can consider that the uh, the density of the water of the liquid water could be uh, slightly equals to one kilograms per liter. So this means that the volume of the water condensed, the water, the liquid,
in practice is equal to 16 point here liters. The relation between the mass and the volume is this one. So volume equals to the mass divided by the density. This, is, this letter is called rho. And, uh, and nothing. Uh, the, the water has the, the density uh, is the as the, uh, the 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 numeric equivalence between the mass and the water uh, at uh, twenty uh, degrees, twenty Celsius degrees, and so uh, we can directly write uh, the the volume of the water. Every kilograms of water occupies. Uh, one liters and every liters of water weight uh, weight one kilograms and so uh, how many times a day we have to empty this tank one the tank uh, the tank equals to ten liters so uh, the tank has to be emptied one time a day. What's the time? OK. OK, now we can do some exercises regarding uh, the gas. Hmm. OK. Um, I don't remember the number, but it is not important. I can start with the new numeration because we are changing uh, the arguments we, did, we, uh, we are treating. And so, one, we are, we are talking about gas. A can spray initially at 24 Celsius degrees and 360 kilo Pascal and the can has volume of 315 milliliters, OK. Uh, 
if the can is left in a car that reaches fifty degrees on a hot day. What is the new pressure in the can? Okay, uh, it takes more time to write the text to the, than uh, to solve the exercise. Uh, it is a simple exercise regarding the use of the ideal uh, uh, gas model. And uh, uh, so we have a can, a spray can, initially at uh, uh, 24 uh, degrees and uh, 360 uh, kilopascal. Uh, the can has volume of uh, 350 milliliters. Uh, the can was left in a car uh, that reaches 50 degrees. And uh, uh, what is the new pressure in the, in the can? Okay. The model we have to consider to use to solve this exercise is the ideal gas uh, model this one uh, mi devo fermare mi devo fermare ok Okay, um, in this case, applying uh, the, the model uh, to this uh, uh, exercise, we can recognize that we have the temperature, we have the pressure, and we have the volume of the can. Uh, in particular, the volume of the can in, uh, in, uh, in this uh, condition, it's constant. Um, we have the volume, okay, but it's a it's a number uh, that remains constant in this uh, uh, situation. So we can consider we can consider this thing to reduce the number of calculation we we can uh, we can do we have to do we have to do because because in this case uh, having the temperature, pressure, and volume. Uh, in the uh, initially condition, I, I, I can think to uh, calculate the moles of the gas inside the can, expliciting uh, this mole uh, in the model, and after go back to consider uh, the, new, the new condition uh, due the, the the increasing of the temperature, but um, we can we can consider that here also the moles remains constant in this uh, in the increasing of the temperature. In in this situation, n equals to constant. Volume equals to constant. And as ever, R is constant. So what I can write? 
that I can write here. That um, and bu R P divided by T equals to constant. Why? Because I have uh, reco uh, recovered together uh, the second member all the the the, the, the constant the constant quantities I'm considering in the models. I'm writing um, P divided by T equals to uh, N R divided by V. These are all constant, and so this ratio between pressure and temperature is constant. So I can uh, I can make uh, calculation more more faster because I can I can uh, write that uh, oh something uh, I have to to say something before uh, I go to uh, substitute the, the numbers inside the model. Um, when we, 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 maybe you already uh, remind this thing, but when we uh, consider the R, the universal constant of the gas, um, we can consider two values uh, substantially, and uh, that leads us to uh, use uh, uh, some uh, unit of measurements or some other use unit of measurements. R could be equals to 0 0.0821 if the uh, unit of measurement are atmospheres multiplying liters divided by moles and Kelvin. But R could be at the same time equals to 8.314 if we consider the pressure expressed in Pascal, the volume expressed in cubic meters and on the denominator we have uh, moles multiplying Kelvin in the same in the same uh, uh, at the same. So here, um, in addition, the temperature we consider inside the model should have to be expressed must to be expressed uh, only in Kelvin. So here we have, uh, this is uh, the temperature expressed in uh, Celsius degrees, summed by this number. So uh, in this case, we obtain because I'm substituting Substitute, uh, substituting uh, the 24 Celsius degrees here. Um, here we have the kilopascal, so we could we could left the kilopascal without uh, transforming uh, uh, the pressure. So uh, we can write that pressure. Initially pressure divided by initially temperature equals to final pressure divided by final temperature. In practice, we want to uh, calculate the final pressure, so final pressure equals to final temperature divided by 
initial temperature multiplying initial pressure. And so we obtain uh, final temperature. This is uh, the initial temperature. The final temperature is equals to 15 plus 0.5. And so it's equal to, it's equal to uh, 300 323.5 Kelvin. So here I can write 323.5 divided by 200, 297.5 multiplying Uh, multiplying initial pressure, it was, okay, 360 kilo pascal. So, Three hundred sixty kilopascal kilopascal, so three hundred sixty thousand pascals. And uh, now I can calculate. This is the result. Uh, multiplying. Okay. The final pressure will be three hundred and ninety one thousand four thousand nineteen uh, Pascal equals to 391.5 kilopascal. Okay. Hmm. Kilopascal, so we are talking about uh, 3.9 uh, bar, if we remember that. The bar is a multi multiple of the, the Pascal. It's equal to 10, uh, a little bit, uh, um, 10 to 5 Pascals. And so, OK, dear boy, uh, if you want, you, you will see. We will see next uh, lesson. Have a nice day.